The history of the Angoda Hospital exudes a sense of eeriness. Even the old official website of the hospital reads that in the beginning, it operated similar to a prison. Some of this eeriness still seems to linger. So, we wanted to find whether they are just misconceptions or if there is some truth behind the present-day rumours. In 2008, Angoda Hospital was recognised as the National Institute of Mental Health Angoda. But this wasn't always the case. Its clinical services started in 1926 and was known as the Angoda Asylum. So, as you can imagine, the conditions were horrific. To get more information, we sat down with Dr. Pushpa Ranasinghe, a consultant psychiatrist at NIMH. She told us that initially, drug therapy, which is known as pharmacotherapy, was not available for patients suffering from mental disorders. The restless patients were physically restrained and sometimes even beaten. With the development of drugs to treat mental illnesses globally, the situation here eventually changed. Instead of physically restraining patients, they could now use medication to sedate the patients. All of which is great, if the patients were given correct doses. She also told us that what is known as electroshock therapy or electroconvulsive therapy was first performed without anesthesia. Fast forward to today, this treatment is still used at NIMH but now it's done with anesthesia. You may wonder, the past could just be the past. Maybe things are different now. We really wish this was the truth too. But a former patient at NIMH that we spoke to had this to tell us. In one instance, I clearly remember that um, my friend who didn't take her medication in the night, she was forced to take it, but she didn't. And then they gave her a chance to take it in the morning, but she didn't want to take it then either. So what I saw was that that patient um, her own, you know, bed sheet was wrapped around her head and they took her on, on the floor, they dragged her on the floor and these three or four nurses were on top of her, attendants were on top of her and they were just, you know, hitting her and it was the worst thing I have ever seen. She mentioned one more incident she witnessed where an old lady was both verbally and physically abused. These events took place not too long ago considering she was admitted to NIMH first in 2018 and then again towards the latter half of 2019. Another shocking thing she told us was that they only had access to a psychiatrist who visited them once a week. Apart from that, they had no access to counsellors or psychologists specialising in talk therapy, which meant that there was no one to explain to them what they were going through or guide them through it. But wait a second. How can the foremost institution specialising in treating mental illnesses in our country not have counsellors or psychologists? Here's how Dr. M. Ganesan, another consultant psychiatrist at NIMH, explains the situation. When you take um, psychotherapy or counselling, it needs a lot of human resource and a lot of trained people. Unfortunately, uh, this is not just for NIMH, for the whole of Sri Lanka. Uh, we do not have enough trained counsellors or psychologists or psychotherapists. And there's a severe shortage in the government sector. Unfortunately, um, we didn't have a good uh, undergraduate program for psychologists in Sri Lanka for a long time. But now we have. So there are steps being taken in to get more psychologists into the health ministry. But so far, we have not been successful. So in the Ministry of Health, at the moment, there's not a single psychologist who is employed. He also emphasised that patients are still being maltreated because here in our country, we only have specialised doctors. Our nurses don't receive training that specifically focuses on treating patients with mental disorders. So, their ability to understand these patients and attend to their needs is not sufficient. According to him, training our nurses adequately is the responsibility of NIMH. Adding to that, Dr. Ganesan mentioned that some aspects of the way NIMH operates are clearly outdated. For example, most patients at the hospital don't get enough freedom. This is partly because the buildings were designed such a long time ago. Their intention back then was to restrict patients' freedom as much as possible. Remember, we said it first operated as an asylum? Not just that. Did you know that NIMH keeps male and female patients in separate wards? They rarely get the chance to spend time together, interact or mingle. 
During our conversation, he said that these conditions have taken so long to change because there is a massive lack of funds. As we learned, in Sri Lanka, the percentage of government health spending going into mental health is surprisingly low. The second thing lacking is the support of national leaders to change the current situation. Now don't forget that this is only one side of the story. Another side of NIMH Angoda you might not be aware of goes like this. Today, the institute offers many forms of specialized care. They have units for patients suffering from dementia and learning disabilities. There is special care for mothers who develop mental disorders during or following pregnancy. And there is a forensic psychiatric unit to evaluate and treat patients who are referred by the high courts. Going beyond that, they have introduced many innovative programs. They use therapeutic activities that help patients regain the skills they have lost because of their mental illness. There is gardening as a form of therapy and even drama and music therapy. Because we have this gender dysphoria clinic uh, where we, people have problems with their uh, gender issues and uh, transgender issues and we have a separate clinic in our day centre. They can walk in and get an appointment. The other special thing, since 2012, we started the gender-based violence prevention clinic calling 1926. And if you have a problem with your relationship and uh, whether you have a child that, uh, I mean, you have a, you are an unwed mother or you have problems with your any other uh, institution where you are working where you have a workplace harassment all those things that uh, you can come and talk to us uh, we have trained nurses each and every ward and those nurses especially for gender based violence prevention and those nurses uh, go through their histories and talk to the patient and find out if they have been discriminated or any uh, where that they have been treated unfairly there is also the 24 hour national mental health helpline which is 1926. Anyone can use this line to learn about mental health and get counselling over the phone. You can get information about treatments that are available and where you can go to receive any treatment you need. Even if you live outside Colombo, they can connect you to the place nearest to your home. As with many things, the story of NIMH has two sides to it. They are working really hard to overcome the hurdles that they are faced with and improve their contribution to our society. So we urge you to have an open mind. Think about it. How many times have you made a joke about sending someone to Angoda? It's these little things that add up to create the stigma that has been surrounding Angoda for many, many years. The Request Show. Every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m.